Welcome to Sacred Circle. It is October 2022. Today we are speaking about ancestral veneration. And before we get started, I like to begin with a couple of affirmations. I allow the universe to speak through me with magic and wonder. I align with my soul self. I allow my practical analytical brain to rest and for the divine to speak through me. Now placing our feet on the floor if we can and our hands palms up perhaps on our laps. Let's take a couple of deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. One more deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth, really allowing yourself to exhale fully and deeply. Setting the intention now that your practical, analytical, everyday mind can rest, can take a break, can take a back seat. And allowing your consciousness, which usually feels like it lives behind your eyes, to gently and smoothly drop into your heart center. Feeling this center of your body more alive, more awake. And setting the intention now to allow yourself to be aware and receptive from this heart center. Some information is more useful when it speaks to our brains and some information is more useful when it speaks to our hearts. Many times when we are talking about spiritual practice or spiritual information, it's more helpful to be aware and receptive from our hearts. The first thing that I'd like to say about ancestral veneration is that it's non-denominational. It can be practiced from any belief system, from any spiritual tradition, and from any religion. It does not need to be combined with a specific belief system or a specific religion. That being said, it does exist in many different traditions. And in that case, you would want to listen most to the tradition of your choice or the tradition that you're initiated in or the tradition that you follow. A lot of the information uh, that I have about ancestral veneration is influenced by spiritualism or spiritismo. And I like to make the distinction that when I talk about spiritualism, I'm not just talking about the spiritualism that happened, originated, and existed in North America. Um, for example, beginning with the Fox sisters, I'm talking about spiritualist influence throughout time and culture, across spaces, across times, across traditions and belief systems. Spiritualism can be found in many different forms. It is believed to have heavily influenced Hoodoo, Vudan, and many other traditions. So this is the season of our ancestors. This is the season of the dead. And what I mean by that is it's the season when we venerate the dead, but when we also honor, it, honor death itself. In this season, we honor death and we honor ourselves as a part of the cycle of life and death. <clears throat> All of the um, traditional Day of the Dead festivities, for example, um, as well as many other uh, All Hallows Eve or Halloween or Samhain traditions are in place for one central reason, which is to uh, recognize the, the dead, to recognize death itself, 
and to, um, to come face to face with it in a way that allows us to celebrate life. So to acknowledge death rather than to deny death, to in some ways confront our fear of death, but in other ways to enhance the joy of life with and through the recognition that we are all going to pass on one day. And at the central center of these ideas is the concept that we are part of a cycle of life and death. And that's where ancestral veneration comes in. We are connected to our ancestors and our ancestors are connected to us. In some ways, this is the strongest reminder and the strongest thread of connection that we have between life and death. This is one of the reasons that we honor our ancestors. It's a way of honoring those who have come before us and those who have passed before us. So not only did our ancestors traverse many paths, open many doors and overcome many obstacles and challenges before we came into this earth, but our ancestors have also passed on into other realms before us. So in many ways, they continue to open doors for us. Samhain is a Irish word. Samhain is spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N. It is an Irish word and it means November. It is traditionally practiced the entire month of November. So this is when I practice my ancestral veneration at its um, the most. It's when I practice it the most. Um, All Hallows Eve is called All Hallows Eve because it is the eve of November. It is the day that we pass through that doorway into the month of November, which is set aside for our ancestral veneration, for our deep spiritual work, for our divination. This marks the beginning of the second half of the year or the dark half of the year. So the word um, Samhain, which has become really popular in modern witchcraft, traditionally comes from European witchcraft. But as we know, this very much crosses over with Dia de los Muertes and many other kinds of traditions. We can see it alive and well in a lot of different cultures, but the most prominent or the closest to perhaps the American culture would be Day of the Dead and Samhain. So why do we venerate our ancestors? One of the reasons that ancestral veneration is so important to so many people is because they are our foundation. They are the foundation of our DNA. They have created us in many ways. They've passed down um, not only a biological inheritance, but a spiritual inheritance, a Um, mental and emotional inheritance. Uh, We honor them because they have helped to create us. We honor the unique characteristics and traits and attributes and strengths that they have passed on to us. The things that they have overcome in their lifetime allow us additional strength to overcome in our lifetime. Many people during the pandemic or during the height of the pandemic, I should say, the pandemic isn't really over, but during the height of the pandemic, many people um, pointed towards the fact that our ancestors have overcome plagues. And this is an excellent example of why we honor our ancestors or one of the reasons that we honor our ancestors. They can pass on to us wisdom and um, characteristics that allow us to thrive today. We start with the ancestors because they started with us. There are a lot of other theories or concepts that are connected to ancestral veneration as well. 
Um, something that I have been thinking about and learning about recently is this idea of a spiritual jump team. These are the spirits who um, have incarnated with us as part of our soul purpose. Um, these are the other humans that are connected with us throughout our lifetime who have a spiritual contract with us to play a certain kind of role in our lives as we go up, up, go through this um, human life in this material realm. And we also have a spiritual contract with them. So many of the people who show up in our lives, especially people who show up repeatedly throughout our lives, um, are part of this spiritual jump team or this spirit team of other humans. We're souls together on this journey with a purpose for one another, assisting each other with our spiritual evolution and our personal growth. Many of our ancestors are on this jump team. Many of our ancestors are on this uh, spirit team. We have soul contracts with our ancestors. And in some cases, we have very strong soul contracts with specific ancestors who are assigned to become our guides after they have passed through this life. When we enter into relationship with ancestors or any kind of spiritual contract, it is for the purpose of spiritual evolution and healing. And we'll talk about that more when we talk about the actual veneration of our ancestors. Let's take a moment to have sacred prayer and veneration of our ancestors. And this is a good example of a prayer that I recommend for your ancestors and may give you some inspiration for how to create your own prayer to honor and venerate your ancestors, especially if you're just starting out your practice. Benevolent ancestors, we come to you out of loyalty, out of respect and devotion. We thank you for all you have done before us and for all you will do in the future. Thank you for the unique gifts, strengths, and characteristics that you have passed on to us. Thank you for the roads you have opened before us. Thank you for the obstacles and challenges you have overcome. And thank you for all of the ways that you continue to guide us. We ask to continue to walk with you. We ask that you continue to walk with us. Please accept this prayer as a sacred offering toward your spiritual evolution and from a place of gratitude, dedication, and love. So it is. So many people ask, who do you contact when you are beginning your relationship with your ancestors? And it is not essential to contact a specific or individual ancestor. It is enough to contact your general group of ancestors. If you would like, you can focus on one specific branch of your family, but you don't even have to do that. You can simply begin by venerating your ancestors as a whole, by venerating your ancestral lineage as a whole, venerating them as a group. You may want to, and in many traditions, in spiritualism, for example, um, you may want to make 
the set the intention that you are contacting your benevolent ancestors. And this is because all of your, not all of your ancestors may be benevolent. So you are seeking a relationship with ancestors who want to enter into a mutually beneficial relationship for spiritual evolution and healing. These are some of the intentions to consider to set um, when you are beginning your ancestral veneration or your practice of meeting with the ancestors. You may also want to consider those ancestors that are assigned to you. However, there may be multiple ancestors assigned to you. It may even be that almost all of your ancestors are um, part of your spirit team. So it's not necessarily necessary to become that specific, but if you want to become more specific, then after you have established your practice, you can begin to request a stronger relationship with one primary ancestor. And you will do that by repeatedly requesting that your primary ancestor make themselves known to you, that they come forward and that they deepen and strengthen their relationship with you always for the purpose of a mutually beneficial relationship for spiritual evolution and healing. This, the, the primary ancestors or the ancestors who are assigned to you, either or, they are typically not those ancestors who have recently departed. Um, in fact, your ancestors need around two years roughly in order to be available and ready to um, be a guide of yours or to even um, communicate with you or guide you in any way. So typically your recently departed ancestors are not going to become a primary ancestor and are not going to become any kind of guide. However, um, as I have um, grown in this practice and as I have grown older and begun to see more of my family members pass on to other realms. Um, I do have a new experience and that is my grandmother who has passed on um, in December of 2020 is now very available to me um, beginning within the last few months. So that is a little bit less than two years, but close to the two year mark. Um, and I didn't expect her to be available to me, but she is. And very, very much so in a, a very powerful way, probably one of the most powerful um, ancestor, the most powerful ancestral connection that I have experienced to date. So have an open mind because um, we never know who is going to be available to us and what those experiences are going to be like. There are some um, signs that you can look for in regard to a um, ancestor who may have a very close relationship with you or may be a big part of a spiritual contract with you. Um, for example, you may share a birthday or your birthdays may be very close together. You may have felt a very strong kinship when they were alive. They may have been um, somebody that you had a different kind of connection with, a different kind of relationship with than other people in your family. And they may have passed on to you very specific traits. So there will be um, very apparent um, or very specific personality traits or gifts or interests, um, things of that nature that they that you have in common, that they have passed on to you. So when you are beginning your journey towards working with your ancestors, Protection is needed in the beginning because when we are communicating with those who have passed on, we are indeed communicating with the dead. So if you are somebody who has um, tendencies towards mediumship, 
specifically or especially if you are somebody who has tendencies towards mediumship, you will want to protect yourself because when you open yourself up to communicating with spirits, there are other spirits who may come forward. And some of them may just want to talk to you in order to see if they can. Um, some of them are looking at it as a kind of experiment. Some of them may be looking to feed off of some energy. Some of them may be lost or confused. Some of them may be playing games and may pretend to be your ancestors when they are not. Spirits are like humans. <laughs> but different, but they do, um, they will play some of the kinds of um, tricks and manipulations that humans might, um, maybe even to a further extent, because spirits have a tendency to be kind of playful. Uh, they have a tendency to um, want to build their own uh, abilities and to see what they can do in their interactions with humans. So there can be kind of trickster spirits, um, things of this nature. So you want to practice protection when before you sit down to communicate with your ancestors when you are building that relationship. Now, after you have gained um, validation in regard to the ancestor or ancestors that you are communicating with, meaning that you're being shown proof in your life or through the guidance and messages, the signs and synchronicities that they're sending you and so forth. Um, once you feel and know intuitively and um, spiritually that you have developed a strong foundation in that relationship, then you can ask your ancestors for protection. Your ancestors are your first line of defense. So in, in that way, you may evolve your relationship to speak with your ancestors um, before you do other kinds of spiritual work or other kinds of spiritual practice or before you practice magic, for example. So this relationship is similar to human relationships in the way that you will want to build it over time and you will want to build trust and the relationship will evolve. Um, very much like a relationship with the, the living, if you will, uh, as well, the relationship with your ancestors is reciprocal meaning that it is not one-sided. It is not just you asking something of them and it is not just them asking something of you. The offerings that you give to your ancestors, the prayers that you give to your ancestors, the energy that you give to your ancestors is for the purpose of their spiritual evolution and for the purpose of their healing. Now, this does not necessarily mean that they are evolved beyond us. In fact, many would say that we are equal with our ancestors. We are all in this spiritual contract with one another, and we are serving them just as much as they are serving us. When you ask for signs and guidance and messages from your ancestors, you will want to ask for it in a way that is clear to you as an individual and in a way that is clear to you on, this, on the human plane. And this is very true of any kind of spiritual communication. This is kind of a hack for getting your messages um, more clearly. This will be especially helpful if they are communicating with you and you don't understand what they're trying to communicate, or if you don't feel you're receiving any messages or guidance from them in the first place. To continue to re reiterate that you would like their communication to come to you in a way that you as an individual can understand and in a way that you can understand on the human plane. Now, going to your ancestors for protection, this concept is going to vary from tradition to tradition. But if you're starting from scratch with no tradition or you're basing your practices on the spiritualist 
um, ways in general, then the things that I have said here are going to be especially beneficial for you. And if your belief system has a, a different way of doing it, then of course your belief system is always what you should follow. A lot of people ask, how do you contact your ancestors? So you can use tools if you would like to. Um, I have found that ancestors and other kinds of spirit guides and other spirits who have passed on will come to me through the tarot. Um, you could also use other tools of divination, such as pendulums, such as throwing the stones or throwing the bones, or such as a spirit board. But really, you don't need to use any tools to contact your ancestors. And when you are building this relationship, I do not recommend that you do use any tools. Instead, you will simply speak to your ancestors out loud. And most people recommend this pattern as a successful um, plan of action. First, you offer them thanks, you offer them gratitude, you offer them respect, devotion, things of this nature. After this, you simply speak to them from your heart about your life. The goal here is not to ask for specific things or to focus on specific areas of health, but instead to inform them about what's happening with your life. And then the intention behind that is to receive guidance, messages, insights that assist you with those areas of your life. Now, in order for this to be beneficial, you need to allow space to sit quietly after you speak, to sit quietly in contemplation or quietly in meditation, um, allowing any guidance or information or messages to come through from your ancestors. This is not to say that you can't ask them specific questions or ask them for help in specific areas of your life, but it is to place emphasis on the fact that our ancestors are here to guide us. Um, to teach us, to show us what to do, to assist us with our spiritual evolution, which means assisting us with living our lives in more spiritual alignment and in a way that is going to progress our spiritual progress. Now, um, after you have developed your relationship to a certain extent, after you have a strong foundation in that relationship, you can begin to ask more specific questions um, or to seek very specific guidance. And in order to do this, I would recommend that you spend some time really clearing your mind, um, perhaps undergoing some spiritual practices yourself, perhaps some cleansing, things of this nature, and writing down the things that you would like guidance with. You can write down specific questions, or you can write down specific areas of your life where you would like to be guided, to be led. So in other words, when we're asking for this guidance, when we're asking to be led, we're asking our ancestors to show us what to do, to show us the choices to make, to show us the appropriate decisions, to um, show us what steps to take, things of this nature. So in the beginning, you're going to speak to them from your heart about your life. And once you have established the relationship, then you can begin to ask for guidance in certain areas. Now, keeping in mind that our ancestral relationship is here, the spiritual contract is here in order to guide us, our ancestors are not the best spirits or um, entities to seek specific things from, such as um, material items, um, things of this nature. So we're not necessarily sitting down and asking our ancestors to lower our rent or bring us a new car or um, things of this nature. Everything that we ask of our ancestors will work out better for us um, 
allow us bigger, clearer results if we approach it from the perspective of guiding us, teaching us, showing us, right? So we're emphasizing our own learning and we're emphasizing emphasizing our own growth and our own personal responsibility. And while we're doing this, we're also working on our ability to connect with those beyond, our ability to connect with our ancestors and our ability to receive messages and guidance and our ability to connect spiritually in general. So there are many reasons why this approach is the most beneficial and why this approach allows us the the best results over time. People often ask when you should venerate your ancestors. In many traditions, people are venerating their ancestors first thing in the morning every day. In other traditions, it may be recommended to venerate your ancestors once a week. In um, other traditions, uh, people are venerating their ancestors once a year at this time of year. So what is most important is what works for you and also a routine and a practice that you feel you can keep up with. You don't ever want to set you yourself up for um, spiritual contracts that you can't follow through on. So you don't want to make some kind of large commitment to your ancestral pack practice and then let yourself down and let your spirits down by not being able to adhere to it. So start small, take baby steps and make your um, commitment or your schedule something that you know that you can keep up with. Where should you venerate your ancestors? You can certainly venerate your ancestors at their graves. You can also venerate your ancestors in nature, meaning you can speak to them in nature. <clears throat> you can also venerate your ancestors at an altar that you create in your home. You don't have to create an altar, but if you want to build this practice and this relationship as something consistent in your life, if you are serious about gaining the spiritual benefits that your ancestors have to give you, then you will want a space in your home that is dedicated to that ancestral veneration and dedicated to this spiritual practice. And you want it to be a space that is only for them. That being said, it doesn't have to be a large space. It can be a shelf on the wall. It can be inside a cupboard. It can be a corner of a counter. It can be anywhere that works for you. There are a lot of different um, methods for setting up your ancestral altar. Uh, generally speaking, in most spiritualist traditions, they recommend that your ancestral altar is covered in a white cloth and that you only use the colors white as well as clear glass on that altar. They also recommend that you don't begin your ancestral veneration with a lot of elaborate offerings, that you keep your offerings simple and you keep your practice simple as well. This is why they use the color white. This is why they use clear glass. It's all um, with the intention of keeping things simple, keeping things pure of heart, keeping things transparent, um, offering clarity, offering illumination on their path of spiritual evolution and on your path of spiritual evolution. So there are um, very specific symbolic reasons why these items are used. The uh, simple offerings that you may start out with would be uh, pure spring water or blessed or charged tap water. Um, coffee is always an excellent offering, fresh flowers, incense, and white candles. When you make those more, um, when you make those stronger connections or when you 
solidify a relationship with primary ancestors or when you want to venerate someone specific on their death date or on their birthday or on a holiday, then you can leave more elaborate offerings and offerings that are specific to that or those individuals, such as foods that were their favorite or holiday foods that you used to make together, uh, a birthday cake when it's appropriate, things of this nature. Let's take a moment to go through a brief guided visualization together. Once again, closing your eyes and taking some deep breaths, three deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Feeling yourself present in your body, the supported weight of your body, resting on its surface. Feeling the outside of your body heavy, solid, relaxed, turning your attention inward and feeling the inside of your body light, vibrant, refreshed. Turn your attention to your ancestors now, whether that's to the general concept of your ancestral lineage or to somebody specific. You can now see your ancestors surrounding you in a circle as of protection. You can see them surrounding you on all sides, holding hands. You can feel yourself in the center of this circle and you can feel the protective and healing energy of your ancestors completely surrounding you. Hold this image and this feeling in your mind's eye and in your heart as you go through your life. Recognizing that you are never alone Recognizing that you can always call upon your ancestors. That you can always see and feel them around you. And that they never leave your side. You are a part of a cycle of life and death which continues after earth. Your ancestors have come before you and they are now waiting for you on the other side, assisting you with getting through this life, opening doors for you as you pass into the other world. and reminding you that life on earth is not the end, that you are a part of a larger connection. Send gratitude to your ancestors now for their devotion to you. Send gratitude to those ancestors that are 
spiritually assigned to you, those ancestors that are fulfilling their soul contract. And feel them sending gratitude back to you as you are also fulfilling your soul contract. carrying this connection and this gratitude with you as you leave the visualization. Turning your attention once again to the heavy support of your body, the weight of your body supported on its surface. when you're ready, opening your eyes, wiggling your fingers and toes, perhaps your head, neck, and shoulders, just feeling yourself very present in the here and now on this material plane. Allowing your eyes to rest on a physical object in your space and noting the details of that physical object. If you would like to follow up with this information and continue a practice of ancestral veneration or to begin a practice of ancestral veneration, I have some suggestions for you. You may create a temporary or permanent space to honor your benevolent ancestors either a temporary space to honor your benevolent ancestors at this time of year or throughout November. You may create or plan a ritual for honoring your benevolent ancestors on All Hallows' Eve or November 1st. You may have what's called a dumb supper where you set a place for one of your ancestors or your ancestors in general at your dinner table and you serve them the food that you are eating and the drink that you are eating, serve them first and then have dinner in silence, allowing the messages and guidance that may come through from your ancestors to come through to you. You can watch my YouTube series on ancestral veneration that goes through in great detail how to set up an altar and all of the ins and outs of venerating your ancestors. And my strongest recommendation for you would be to practice increasing or deepening your intuition. Because the way that your ancestors speak to you or communicate with you is going to be through the gifts that are strongest for you. And in order to have a successful communication with your ancestors, it is going to be necessary to understand how your personal intuitive gifts work for you. Keeping in mind that your intuition is a gateway to your deeper psychic abilities Paying attention, does your intuition come to you through hearing? Does it come through to you through sight? Does it come to you through feeling? How do you receive your intuitive messages? This is the way your ancestors will speak to you. It could be through your dreams. It could be in a multitude of ways. And as you continue your ancestral practice, your intuition and your ability to receive messages are going to increase with time and with dedication. As I close this session, I request that our benevolent ancestors 
are with us throughout this season and throughout all times. I request that they allow us to walk with them, that they send their messages, guidance, signs, and information in a way that we can understand on the human plane and in a way that we as individuals can understand. Knowing and honoring that are, they are closer to us now than at any other time of the year. I request that they send their guidance, their messages, their information to us in a way that we cannot miss. With crystal clarity, with strength and volume, I ask our benevolent ancestors to send us the guidance and messages that we most need at this time. to show us what it is they need from us, to strengthen these relationships and to assist with their spiritual evolution and healing, as well as to assist us towards more ease, more joy, and more success in our everyday lives. Please guide us and lead us at this time and always, blessed be, so it is. And before we completely end the session, I do have a couple of announcements I would like to make. I am offering some uh, temporary Samhain season services. So I am offering a service to conjure spirits, which is for assisting us in deepening or building our relationship with spirit guides and ancestors or spirits of any kind that are close to us. We may request that they assist us in specific endeavors or specific goals and situations where we may simply request to strengthen our connections and com communications with them. This is a custom service. I am also offering a Samhain season van van service. This is for the purpose of cleansing, clearing, uplifting, and refreshing our energies to prepare for moving deeper into the darker seasons of the month, as well as eclipse season, allowing us a smoother transition through eclipse season and a smoother transition into the underworld of ourselves, which is more present during the dark months. These services will be performed throughout the week of November 7th after the eclipse. These services close on 10-23 Sunday. So the deadline to book these services is on 10-23 before the 24th. And those services are offered at almost a 50% discount of what a similar service is typically offered. Also until the end of October, so until November 1st, I am offering 25% off magical mentorship sessions and psychic development sessions. Magical mentorship sessions are used to develop specific skills for making magic, manifesting, or spell casting. Psychic development, of course, is for psychic development. These teaching sessions are offered at 25% off with the code Moon Magic, all caps. Magic is spelled M A G I C K. Thanks for being here today. Much love, many blessings.